Hello everyone, my name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, and I'm here to tell you one of the greatest comeback and underdog stories there ever was. A race that also would be a last hurrah for a legendary organization. We're talking the 1999 Goodies Body Pain 500. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing. I'm going to do a lot more of these sort of videos. I already have the video for next week planned out. Also comment what you thought of this video. What'd you think of the 1999 Goodies Body Pain 500 and its legacy? The 1999 Goodies Body Pain 500 was on April 18th, 1999. The day most associated with the last game of the legendary career of Wayne Gretzky. But I know this day in a different light as this was the day you had the last ever win from Petty Enterprisers. In early 1999, there was a rookie by the name Tony Stewart making his eighth career Cup Series start. Gets his first career pole for the number 20 for Joe Gibbs Racing. This driver right here might have a bright future, I'm thinking. The main character of our story is starting in row 11, position 21, Driver of the number 43, John Andretti. Yeah, those Andrettis. John Andretti out of the legendary Andretti family. Probably the most legendary racing family in the world. John Andretti is the nephew to the legendary Mario Andretti. John Andretti raced open wheel cars for a few years in the late 80s, early 90s, before he decided to come to the Cup Series in 1993 getting his first career win at the legendary Daytona International Speedway in 1997 in the Pepsi 400. It's been 55 races since John Andretti has been to victory lane. All right, the green flag is out, and Tony Stewart, I mentioned he started on the pole, but he immediately drops to the back at the start of the event, and that's all we really hear from him for the rest of the day. Mark Martin ends up leading lap number one of the goodies body pain 500 and Mark Martin would be one of the few drivers competing for the victory throughout the afternoon the drivers that you had leading majority of the race you of course had Mark Martin Rusty Wallace Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton one driver that made it known he was going to be a big threat for the win was Rusty Wallace Rusty Wallace I would say was the king of the short tracks in the 90s Anytime the Cup Series was coming to a short track, you know that Rusty Wallace was going to compete for the victory. And two drivers not too far behind him were Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton. I can't even tell you how many legendary battles on the short tracks we've seen from Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. And a driver like Jeff Burton tends to always be under the radar because of his driving style. And where is our main character, you ask? For John Andretti, didn't really make much movement at the beginning portion of this race. Hanging out around 20th. Then you see Andretti finally crack the top 20. And then this happens. John Andretti ends up getting into it with Ward Burton at Martinsville Speedway very early on in the race. Did not get a caution flag. Ended up going a lap down. The driver of the number 43 from Pennsylvania. Right after this Andretti spin, you'd see the first of many battles throughout the day between Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. These two just know how to put on a show at the short tracks. They always have fantastic races. Look up any sort of highlights between these two and you're going to be entertained. After John Andretti had spun around, he seemed to have unlocked some speed in that car. After he'd spun around, he had to try to manually get his lap back and he was driving down the race leader of Jeff Gordon. Right before he was able to catch up to Jeff Gordon, the driver that turned him around got turned around. And that was Ward Burton bringing out the caution flag right before John Andretti was potentially going to attempt to get past race leader Jeff Gordon. Well, at least he's the first driver one lap down, which means he gets the lucky dog, right? Nope, not back in 1999, people. Back in 1999, you had to do it the old-fashioned way and get it back manually, which made for a lot of fantastic racing. I'm pretty sure if this were still the case today, everybody would be a Ryan Newman or Ross Chastain and would refuse to let you pass them. And after a pair of cautions, Andretti still doesn't seem to show a lot of speed, but a driver that is showing a lot of speed early is his teammate Kyle Petty. 
Kyle Petty in the number 44 Hot Wheels Pontiac is beginning to tear up the field. Moving up, Kyle Petty would soon get to the top 10. One thing that seemed really strong for John and Dreddy was the long runs. They ended up going on a long run, and Dreddy is beginning to drive down race leader Jeff Gordon to try to get his lap back. John and Dreddy makes a pass to Gordon, getting his lap back. He gets this lap back almost 100 laps after getting turned around by Ward Burton. And while Gordon's getting held up behind Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt not trying to go a lap down, we have more battles between him and Rusty Wallace, Jeff Burton trying to join the battle as well. All this battling went on for multiple laps between these drivers. While the leaders are battling, John Andretti continues to pull away, is pulled away by almost a whole straightaway at this point, really showcasing the speed of that STP 43. It seemed to be a really strong weekend for Petty Enterprisers, winning the truck race, and Kyle Petty is now driven in to the top five. The never-ending battle between Gordon and Wallace continues as these two continue to go back and forth for the race lead. A spin involving Ernie Irvin would end up ending the very long green flag run. Ultimately, this would bring John Andretti back into close proximity of the race leaders. And from this point forward, John Andretti slowly and methodically moves his way through the field. Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace continue their battles. Jeff Burton begins to show a little bit more speed in that number 99. A couple of cautions along the way, including Kenny Irwin getting his car stuck on the backstretch wall. That was pretty interesting. Andretti working throughout the day finally gets into the top 10 with a little over 100 laps to go. Then we get a caution, and Andretti's team decides to take a chance on two tires. Very interesting call from Andretti's race team, taking the two tires. It hadn't worked all day. I remember earlier on in the race, it really backfired for Dale Jarrett. But the number 43 STP Pontiac team was willing to take that shot for John Andretti. So all of a sudden, John Andretti finds himself in the top five with 100 laps remaining. And for the beginning portion of this run, Andretti seemed to be holding his own. Seemed like the two-tire strategy had helped him get some track position, was hanging around the fourth position. But then with a little bit over 50 laps remaining, it seemed like John Andretti had found something in that number 43 car that wasn't there earlier. He really began to pick up the pace, getting past the number two of Rusty Wallace, who seemed to have fallen off a little bit at the end of the race, along with Mark Martin. At the end of this race, it really seemed like a Jeff was going to be in victory lane. The question is, was it going to be Jeff Gordon or Jeff Burton? But then here comes that STP 43 out of nowhere on two tires, running the fastest laps on the racetrack on a consistent basis. The only thing I could think of with this 43 car in the late goings was that maybe these left side tires were just able to grip onto the track so well and those fresh right side tires were able to provide speed for the 43 in the late goings of this race because he was a rocket ship at the end of this run. Just over 10 to go, he gets to Jeff Gordon and makes very quick work of the number 24 as he begins to chase down the number 99 of Jeff Burton. One thing I didn't really know after watching back on this race, I didn't know how close jeff burton and john andretti were these two were actually the best of friends two of some of the nicest drivers and the most cleanest race car drivers are going to battle it out for a victory at martinsville john andretti finally gets to his bumper with around seven laps remaining he begins to make his moves on the number 99 of burton lap traffic was such a key factor in this race when it came to racing and catching up to drivers it was part of the reason why Andretti was able to get to Burton. So Andretti was able to get around Jeff Burton with a little bit of help from lap traffic. And he begins to drive away from the 99 with only a few laps remaining in the goodies body pain 500. Like I mentioned, it's been 55 races since Andretti has been to victory lane. Petty Enterprisers has not been to victory lane since 1997 with Bobby Hamilton. Andretti would end up crossing the line, the winner, a very exciting moment for all fans of the sport at this time, a very popular victory indeed. Like I mentioned, John Andretti, such a likable guy, a likable driver, one of the biggest underdog wins 
in history, plus one of the biggest comebacks in history. The great years of the number 43 STP Pontiac were behind them. Everybody knew that. The writing was on the wall. John Andretti being an open wheel driver coming over to NASCAR and other than a win at Daytona had not had a very successful career up to that point. Then after going a lap down early because of a spin with Ward Burton, against all odds, John Andretti won this race. And it probably was one of the most legendary victory celebrations in history as well. You had Richard Petty really ecstatic over this victory for John Andretti even riding in the car, going to victory lane. I'd say it was the last great moment at Petty and Appraiser's history. Able to win the Truck Series race the day before with Jimmy Hensley, and then winning the Cup race with John Andretti, a huge underdog and comeback story, was a huge story for the sport. And to see how happy John Andretti was in victory lane, and to see how happy the King, Richard Petty, was for that victory, was heartwarming to say the least. But I think the thing that hurts the most looking back at this victory is knowing that this would be the last win for Petty Enterprisers. Petty Enterprisers would have their doors open until 2008. They did not get another victory within that time before they merged with Everham. One of the most legendary, if not the most legendary, NASCAR team had their last win on this day, April 18th 1999 it would end up also being the last win in the career of john andretti john andretti only ever had those two wins one win at daytona probably the most legendary track on the nascar circuit and possibly the most legendary circuit in north america then to also win on one of the most historic circuits in north america being the martinsville speedway in virginia in one of the most epic races ever ran in the 43 STP Pontiac was driven by John Andretti. The 1999 Goodies Body Pain 500 will go down in history. One of the greatest comeback stories, also one of the greatest finishes at Martinsville Speedway, the legendary oval in Virginia, also known as the Paperclip. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the 1999 goodies body pain 500 at martinsville speedway and what do you think of its legacy also let me know any other races you'd like me to talk about i appreciate you tuning in my name is kyle aka racing boy short saying peace